It was a beautiful day in a beautiful place. A municipal park nestled between a city and the sea. A crisp breeze blew in from the Pacific Ocean, and by early afternoon, several kites were lifting off into the San Diego sky. One of them in particular captured my attention. It was a triangle of nylon fabric with a tail that extended more than 70 feet. Remember the old saying, go fly a kite? It was about to take on a whole new meaning. I watched intently, captivated by the color and movement that swirled right above me. It was a fascinating mix of chaos and choreography. After several minutes, I began to sense that there might be more going on here than just a dazzling air show. You see, that kite's erratic path reminded me of how circumstances, the ups and downs of everyday life, have often defined my relationship with God. There were days when my spirits soared with hope and joy, usually because my circumstances were going exactly the way I wanted. My wife and kids were healthy and happy. My job was fulfilling. I had good friends, a reliable car, some money in the bank, and a secure feeling about the future. I found that during those moments of contentment, the presence of God seemed real and very close. And when my emotions were flying high and smooth, it was easy to identify with the optimism of Psalm 27. God is my light and my salvation, so why should I be afraid? I will hold my head high with shouts of joy, singing and praising the Lord. But like everyone else on the planet, my life journey hasn't always been paved with clear skies and fair winds. Why? Because circumstances are fickle and they can change radically in an instant. I know exactly how this works. You get devastating news that a loved one has only a few months to live or that your employer decided to downsize the company. Maybe a friendship is fractured by a misunderstanding. Or you just feel beaten down by the soul-numbing barrage of ugly politics, global unrest, and a world that seems to be spinning wildly off its axis. When I've stumbled under the weight of life's inevitable trials, the Psalms have also given voice to my deepest fears. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I cry out by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. As the kite continued to spin in frenzied loops, I shifted my focus to the pilot who flew it so skillfully, and the metaphor hit even closer to home. The destiny of that fragile aircraft rested entirely in the hands of a master and no movement or change of course could happen apart from his knowledge and control. The personal application was obvious. Regardless of how convoluted or distressing life may seem, or how weak and distant my faith might become, I was never beyond the watchful care of the God who not only held me in the palm of his hand, but who could also use the piercing sting 
of difficult circumstances to draw me closer to him. Then I looked at the narrow strands that linked the kite to the pilot. If that connection ever broke, the consequences would be severe. The same principle applied to my spiritual life. As long as the bond between God's grace and my heart remained strong and vital, I'd have the resources to not only survive the turbulent winds of suffering, confusion, and doubt, I could actually rise above them. The hours passed quickly, and a reality that I'd long acknowledged, but seldom embraced, became increasingly clear. A meaningful relationship with God simply cannot be based on how the events of my life unfold. Because circumstances and the emotions they ignite so easily are as unpredictable as the trajectory of a stunt kite and can never be the source of the genuine, lasting sense of inner peace that God has promised in His Word. On a planet where anxiety and heartbreak are facts of life, the steadfast eternal hope that we all long for can be realized moment by moment, day by day, when we cling through faith to the perfect wisdom, truth, and love of our Master Pilot, the Creator and Savior of the world. <laughs>